We better replace that fuel line and put some new plugs in there while we're at it. Good kick's all she needed. Good old Yankee know-how. That's what my dad all... That's what they used to say. Well, you say we knock off early for a change. Let's go and get washed up and surprise your mother. Hmm? What do you say? Uh, remember I, I told you some of the fellows at school were, were going to pick fruit this summer? Yeah. Well, I, I want to sign up. Well, what about the ranch? Well, I figure I can go the last three weeks in July. We won't be ready for late haying yet. And in three weeks, I could probably earn enough to buy an old used car. Then I can start working towards college. Chris. All you have to do is sign this application. I sure wish you'd have brought this up before you got your heart all set on it, Chris. What's wrong with it? Oh, earning money towards a car. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Well, then will you sign? Right there. No, Chris, I won't. Why not? Because you're too young. Oh, come on. I'm 15. Chris. Well, I will be in July. Exactly. You'll be 15. I mean, you've never been on your own before. And I tenor a work gang, that's not exactly my idea of a good way to start. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Chris, I mean, next year you'll be 16, right? I expect there'll be some fruit to pick then, too, don't you? Next year. Anything I really want, it's always next year. I want to go now. Well, I'm sorry, Chris, you can't go. Now, that's final. You understand that? Yes, sir. I'll be back. Chris, supper's ready. Now eat your carrots. I know, they're good for me, right? Right. Cow? Don't come. What I'd like to know is who made the rule? What rule? Anything that zech is supposed to be good for you, but anything that's really yummy, like like lemon cake or chocolate chip cookies, are supposed to be too fattening or too much starch, or gives the hives. Now, I bet no kid ever made that rule. What's so interesting in that journal? Your supper's getting cold. Oh, I gotta do some work on that chicken coop fence. Something got in there last night and got a couple of those leggings. Wouldn't happen if you let me keep a dog. We discussed that before, Chris. You call no a discussion. Mom, do I get dessert if I leave half the carrots? Eat some more. I mean, just because you had trouble back on your sheep ranch. I told you before, Chris. Uh, Marino sheep are a skittery breed. You get a dog in there, yip and chase them around before they get used to their surroundings. It's just driving crazy. Mom, don't you think I'm old enough to be trusted with a dog? That's not the point, son. Chris, you know it isn't that Cal doesn't trust you. It's just... Then what? I'm too young to pick fruit. Now I can't keep a dog away from some fancy sheep. Chris, don't be stubborn. Can I be excused? Well, you haven't even touched your supper. Well, I'm not very hungry. 
Chris. Brent. Let him go. Boy, if you're this strict with Chris, I'll be an old maid before, before you ever even let me go out on a date. Let me see something. I guess he's some gray hair. I mean it, Mom and Pop. Don't you realize? You see, kids are older these days than when you were kids. a little scared of me now, but I'll be back. I'm going to help you. You're going to be mine no matter what he says. I can help you with? No, Mom. Really. <laughs> Nothing wrong with me at all. Well, I'm gonna go to my treehouse. Wait a minute. I forgot to tell you, but Aunt Edith called just before church, and they're coming over for a little visit. Herbie, too? Of course. They'll be here any minute. Oh, boy. Chris? But he's... Well, you know, he, he's Herbie. Now, Chris, I want you to promise me that you will make a special effort to be nice to Herbie. <gasps> How could your own sister have a Herbie? Well, she is my sister, and he is your cousin. And even if he weren't, he's a guest in your house, and you should make him welcome. Okay, Mom, I promise. Go on. Chris? Can you keep a secret? You gonna pull something on Herbie? No. Then what's so secret? I found a wild dog in the woods. A wild Shh, dog? Lucy. Can we keep him? I'm gonna try, but you can't tell anybody. Promise? Cross my heart. He's a German shepherd. A beauty. But he's wild and hurt and starving. Maybe dangerous. Oh. Are you afraid of him? No. But I gotta feed him to show him I wanna make friends. If I don't, he's liable to attack the sheep. But Pop said he couldn't have a dog. That's why it's gotta be our secret. That's what the meat's for, right? Right. And I got some medicine right here for his paw. But while I go take care of him, you're gonna have to do something about Herbie. He's likely to ruin everything. I know. I'll let him ride Spot. Will you, Suze? A secret wild dog. Boy, it's worth it. Anyway, maybe Spot will throw him. <coughs> hey, Susie, you should see me drive one of these babies. Uh-huh. Hey, what's taking Chris so long? You said you wanted to see a spinning reel, didn't you? Yeah, but how long does it take him to get it? 
He won't be long. Where'd he go, anyway? Hey, you want to ride my horse? Well, it's better than nothing. Come on. Come on, boy. You need this medicine or else your paw's going to get worse. Here. Here's some meat. Eat this. Come on. That paw's really swollen. You got a bad infection there, boy. Let me just put some of this stuff on it. Take it easy. I don't want to hurt you now. Just take it easy. Good dog. <laughs> take it easy. Okay. Good boy. Yeah. She's not wild or anything, is she? She's a he, silly. And he's gentle as a baby. Ain't you got a saddle? You don't need one, do you? Of course not. Just because I live in the city doesn't mean I don't know about horses. Okay, go ahead. Get up. Uh, uh, I, uh, 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 I can tell you're an expert. <laughs> giddy up, giddy up. What's the matter with him? He won't go. Herbie, I think you might have the reins too tight. Oh, he's one of those loose rein kind of horses. Let's see how fast he can go. Giddy up! Herbie, you're supposed to stay here. Whoa, easy boy, whoa! Herbie, no! Herbie, wait! Come back! Why don't you try eating this again? You don't want to starve to death, do you? Come on, try and eat it. Just wait right there, boy. Hey, Chris! He's gone, boy. Chris! Chris! Give me your paw. I gotta do this one more time. Take it easy. Take it easy. Where are you, Chris? Oh, stay here, boy. Stay here. What you doing in there? Nothing. Thought you were getting your spinning reel. I couldn't find it. You sure don't look happy to see me. What's that? None of your business. A secret, huh? I like secrets. Get out of here, Herbie. I can go where I want. You cannot. Oh, yes, I can. Herbie, I told you to get out of here. My nose, it's bleeding. Well, I warned you. Get up. He tried to kill me. Oh, no, he didn't. Anyway, you're the one who stuck your nose in where it didn't belong. I'm going to tell on you. Both of you. Mama! Mama! Mom! Oh. Oh, my nose. Oh, Mom. Oh. Whose move is it? I think it's still up to you, Ed. Edith, I'm so sorry. Think he's gonna die? Where is he? Putting Spot away. Eh, no. Every time we come over here, something like this happens. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Chris, how could you? He's nothing but a bully. Well, don't you have anything to say for your behavior? Well, uh... I'm sorry. Well, now, I guess you think that excuses your attacking Herbie, beating him up like some animal. 
Kirby started it. I did not. You did too. Chris told you to go away, but you didn't. You hit him. He was only trying to defend himself. That's a lie. He came up and hit me from behind. Kirby Fenton, that isn't true. Just because he's trying to hide some big secret in the woods. Uh -uh. Shut up. You see? You see how he behaved. Now, just stop it, all of you. Let's just try to figure out what's happening. Chris, have you been hiding something in the woods? Yes, Mom. Hmm? Must be very important. Well, I guess you'd better tell us what it is. Yeah, I think you should. I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> seems to me a man's got a right to a little privacy. I got a thing or two myself I plan to keep a lid on. Well, I must say. Well, Cal, I, I do think that under the circumstances... Chris, you went up to your room and stay there. I'll have more to say to you later. Yes, sir. some ice cream now? Yes. Yes, ice cream is a very good idea. Oh. Oh, Mom, it hurts. Oh. Sunday. Hey, I'll go home? Yeah. But Chris, I said my piece about the secrets, but it seems to me like you broke a promise to your mother. Is that right? Yes, sir. So you were at fault, huh? Yes, sir. Any excuses? Any explanations? No, sir. But Chris, it, this isn't any easier for me than it is for you, you know? Yes, sir. You keep giving me the answers you think I want to hear. You and I are headed for nothing but trouble. I mean, we'll get to the point we won't even talk at all. Well? All right, Chris. Now, if you're the young man you think you are, instead of just a pouting little boy, you'll start giving me some answers you mean. Well, any explanations? We had a fight. You had a fight, despite your promise to your mother. We was trying to butt in. He swung at me. It was none of his business. Oh, well, that's better. Go ahead. Besides that, he drives me nuts. He's selfish and he brags all the time and he's a liar. Even when I try to be nice to him, he drives me out of my skull. Well, Chris, I got... <laughs> I got to tell you the truth. I mean, I have an occasional urge to take little Herbie and all the other Herbies in this world and dump him right in the cattle trough. You do? Sure, I do, just like you do. But now, does that give me the right to do it? No. Doesn't give you the right. Do you know why it doesn't give me the right? Well, you're a lot bigger than Herbie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the main trouble is, you see, if you, if you start taking out all your feelings on the Herbies in this world, it's usually somebody else that gets hurt. I'm the only one in trouble. No, sir. In this case, it's your mother. Mom. Sure, you're old enough to be able to figure that out. Chris, you embarrassed her. You put her, you put her right on the spot in front of her own sister. But what's worse? I mean, you broke your word to her. And that hurts not you or Herbie. That hurts your mother. 
Why didn't you let her question me? <laughs> Come on, Chris. Did you want her to make you tell what you're up to in the woods? Well, you got me off the hook. It was your mother I got off the hook. Besides, I meant what I said about a man's right to his privacy. Sure good to see you, too. You know something? I could taste your apple pies and fresh bread of yourn all the way up and down the San Joaquin Valley and plumb up to Washington State. So that's why you keep coming back every year, and we thought it was just because you liked us. Well, now, what would give you a funny notion like that, Mrs. Long? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Mrs. Fitch now, Leroy, for over two months. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, good. Hiya, Leroy. Is it Chris? Yeah. Little Chris? Sure. How could a man my age grow a foot shorter in a year's time? <laughs> well, you grew a year younger, too, Leroy. Oh, you a good sight to see you after a long year's traveling, boy. Leroy, this is my husband, Cal. It's a real pleasure, Leroy. Likewise. And I hope you don't mind me dropping in on you, Mr. Fitch. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fitch, he's Pop or Cal. How'd you like it if people went around calling you Mr. Leroy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about Pop, but Cal's a lot easier on the tongue than Mr. Fitch. I gotta admit that. Well, it's a lot easier on my ear, too. Well, uh, you got some work around here a fella could put his hand to to kind of help pay for his grub? Yeah, I think uh, we'll all be able to find a thing or two, don't you? I mean, first thing tomorrow morning, for instance... First thing we have to do is feed this poor thing. Well, uh, I guess I could force something down. <laughs> <laughs> Come on with me, kids. We'll be ready by the time you're all settled in. Well, you say we can load you into the raw guest room there. Yeah, good. Hey, you travel kind of light, don't you? Well, too many things weigh the man down, you know. Don't like roots, huh? I got plenty roots. Yeah, there, all the way from California to the border. Come like the blossoms on the fruit tree. When the weather gets good and hot or something like that there. <laughs> then I just take off and go someplace else. <laughs> Well, it's not much, as you know, but you're welcome to it. Oh, thank you. You know, I feel like we know each other, Leroy. Friends been telling me about you since before we got married. Yeah, that lady in there is as close to her daughter as I'll ever have. And them young'uns, eh? They're just like grandkids. Yeah. They value you about the same. Listen, I'll get you some sheets. Now, Cal, uh, I hope you don't mind me jumping into something that ain't none of my business, but it's bothered me ever since I got here. Sure. Well, ain't no need of beating around the bush about it. How you making out of young Chris? It shows, huh? You do like a pair of bookends facing different ways and keeping a lot between you. Well, you know, as far as Chris is concerned, I mean, it, any man that tries to replace his father is just stepping on a memory, you know what I mean? Yeah. You wasn't there the day of the accident, I was. And it, it, it's a miracle how Chris was so clear when the car turned over. But there he was, and all he could do is watch it burn with his daddy pinned inside. The boy was in shock for days. When we first met, I mean, you couldn't even light your pipe around him that he didn't start shaking and sweat. He was... But... He's getting over that. Now, Cal, it ain't nothing but what a little time and a little growing up won't take care of. Yeah. Listen, I'll get you those sheets.
it sure could help us, so I go over and ask him to join. You know what he said? No, what? What did he say? He said, I'd be glad to, fella, only I just come from that lumber camp and they throwed all us sissies out this morning. <laughs> they throwed all us sissies. I don't get it. I'll explain it to you later. <laughs> Leroy, just for that, you have to go out and gather up all the eggs for breakfast. Well, if a fella has to be insulted for telling nothing but the uh, unvarnished <laughs> truth, I'd about as soon be with the chickens. Excuse me. I think I'll give Leroy a hand. Well, spit it out, boy. What, Leroy? Whatever it is you ought to talk to me about. You've been itchy as poison ivy all evening. Oh. Well, I... I want to ask your advice. Well, I don't charge nothing for it, you know. Of course, there's a thing to say that's about what my advice is worth, but... Well, you see, there's this neighbor boy, and he's got a dog, a wild dog. And this dog, well, he's sick, and he, he's got a hurt paw, and he's skinny as a skeleton. But he's really a beautiful German shepherd. Mm-hmm. Neighbor boy. Yeah. And I told him how you're an, an expert on animals and practically a vet. And I thought maybe you might have some medicine with you. Now, hold it, Chris. Hold it. First thing we got to do is to get things straight between me and you. Now, I won't pry no family secrets or ask no nosy questions, but why don't you just start out with admitting that you got this dog? It's me, Leroy. But he forbid me to have a dog like I want. He'd probably have a fit if he even knew I'd ever seen one. But your daddy's gonna have to know. He's my stepfather, Leroy. Well, yeah, but he's still gonna have to know. I'm not gonna lose his dog no matter what he says. That dog needs a friend, Leroy. And it's gonna be me. Here, boy. Here, boy. Hi, boy. It's me. Easy, boy. Take it easy. Look here. Look what I brought you. Full of medicine from Leroy. See? Make you feel better, boy. Now remember, I'm your friend. Don't be afraid. I, I'm gonna try and help you, but you gotta trust me, boy. You're in awful shape. Here. You wanna try and eat some of this? Huh? Good boy. Good boy. You're my dog now. My dog. Here now. Eat this. Don't you want it? It's the only thing that'll make you better, boy. Come on, you have to. Listen, boy. Stay here. I'm, I'm gonna go for help. Hang on, boy. A dog? Yes, sir. Up in the woods. A German shepherd. What's the matter with him, Chris? He's sick. But I've been feeding him, but now he's dying he's so sick. I need help. Please. Chris, why didn't you tell us about this before? You couldn't get that medicine down here? He's too weak to eat. All right, friend, you and Susie get a dry place in the barn fixed up for him. Leroy, you get what you need. I'll grab our coats. Chris! Is he... Is he gonna die? 
I won't let him, Seuss. better, huh? Bet you're hungry. I'll be right back. Morning. Morning. Your mother tells me that dog in there is eating like a king. Yes, sir. Say, listen, Chris. You know just about the last thing I want around here is a dog, right? Yes, sir. Well, even less do I want a monster. That's about what I'd be if I made you get rid of that dog. You mean I can keep him? Well, now, wait a minute. First of all, he's gonna have to prove that he won't bother those sheep. That's up to me, isn't it, sir? That's up to you. And second, I mean, for you can call him yours, we're gonna have to make an honest effort to find his real owner. What do you mean by an honest effort? How could we possibly know who lost him? Well, put that in the paper and try to find out. But I found him. I made friends with him when he was hurt and fed him and cured him. Now, now Chris, wait a minute. I mean, what, what if you'd lost that beautiful dog? I mean, you see, that's what I mean about an honest effort. It's, it's, it's knowing the consequences and going ahead anyway and doing the right thing. So somebody could just see an ad in the paper and I'd have nothing. Chris, I think I know what that dog means to you. But see, that's a risk we have to take. The risk we have to take? You didn't even want him around. we have to run it? Oh, I think about two weeks would be a fair offer, don't you? Two weeks? And if nobody claims him? 
Well, why don't we talk about that in two weeks? Hey, Suze, watch this. See that? He does that every time I feed him, as soon as he's finished. Some dog, isn't he? Yep, he sure is. You know, Chris, somebody had to teach him how to do that. Two weeks. <laughs> hey, look, Suze. He wants to play. Come on, let's go outside. to go after him. I want you to go get Leroy. And fast, because I don't know how long I could hold him. Chris, you sure you want to do this? Yeah. And I want you here for a witness, too. OK. <laughs> now, now, these are sheep, boy. Nothing but dumb sheep. So you just ignore him, you hear? Don't disappoint me now, boy. You don't want any part of those sheep. If you want to stay here with me, you're going to have to do like I tell you. Chris, the ram. This is it. You're going to have to prove yourself now, or else we both had it. Show him. You and me. Come on, boy. Come here. Good boy. Okay, now sit. Good boy. Disturb the sheep, huh? How's that for a dog? Cal, this is uh, Mr. Horn. He came about the ad in the paper. This is my husband, Cal Fitch, Mr. Horn. Pleased to meet you, Fitch. Mr. Horn? We used to, we used to call him Rex. It's a uh, a lot easier than that string of fancy foreign names that's on his papers. Um, this is my son, Chris. He's the one who found the dog. Now, you're the one I'm obliged to. That's if it's my Rex. Chris, maybe you better... Maybe you better go get him, huh? 
Yeah, wife and I, we, we lost old Rex. We, we was on a little picnic over at Fineville. First thing I knew, he was taking off with some boys that was hiking on up into the mountain. That dog sure meant a lot to us. He's worth a lot of money, too. Good dog, no doubt about that. Hey, there's old Rex. Well, I'd know him anywhere. Come on, Rex. Come on. Hiya, Rex. There he is. Hiya, Rex. Hey, remember me? Hiya, Rex, boy. Turn him loose, Chris. Come on, Rex. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, Rex. Well, it's kind of like I was telling the missus there. Uh, it's really my wife's dog, and uh, you know how some animals are. They... One man, uh, one woman dog. Yeah, well, you know, he just doesn't get your scent yet. Move in close. Let him get a good whiff of you. Nah, come on, boy. Come on, Rags. Come on, boy. Come on, Rags. Come on, boy. Come on, Rags. <laughs> Well, I changed my brand of soap since we lost old Rex, even my shave lotion. I, I thought he might forget me like this, so I, I just brought this muzzle along now. Here, boy, you've been, you've been feeding him. He trusts you. You just slip it on him. I can't put this thing on him. Now, look, boy, you do as you're told. Mr. Horn, I think you better take that muzzle and just get back in your truck. Look, that's my dog, and he's worth a lot of money. And now I intend to take what's mine. You never laid eyes on that dog for this morning. You know it, I know it, even the dog knows it. Well, what I know is it's my dog. Chris, you're going to put the dog back out... in the barn, son. Just stand there with him, all right? Now, you just hold it right there, Look, boy. I think you better get back in your truck. <laughs> Listen, son, you take that dog and you put him in that truck over there. know about that guy? No dog grouse like that. It's own master. Besides, nobody's gonna come bossing us around on our own property. Come on, boy. She wasn't pup terrific. Yeah, and he doesn't even like y'all. muscles. Chris, what would you do? Do if what? If the real owner comes. I don't know, Suze. Boy, I'd cry my eyes out. For me and for you. Because I know how much he means to you. Would you cry, Chris? I'm too old, Suze. I'm not. Well, you're just a girl. I mean, you're you're just a little girl. What's it like getting too old to cry? Sort of scary. It came all of a sudden when Dad and I were... You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. No, it's okay. You see, Suze, you go along being a kid, and whenever something happens that you just can't handle, you ball, and that's okay. 
And then some grown-up comes along and tells you everything's going to be better or takes away whatever it is that's scaring you. Do you understand, Suze? Won't they always do that, Chris? Well, maybe, but one day something will happen and, and you'll just all of a sudden know you, you can't cry about it. But why? Because you got to handle things for yourself from then on. All by yourself? That's it, Suze. That's the way it is. That's how you felt? I mean, that's why you couldn't cry? When Dad... Crying couldn't put out that fire. Just couldn't. And... Couldn't make him alive again, either. Hey, look, Suze. He wants to play. <laughs> hey, wait for me, boy. Why do you keep calling him boy? Why do you name him? Never gave him much thought. Boy, if I had me a dog like that, I would have named him five minutes after I had him. Okay, then you name him. Oh, that's easy. I can think of a jillion names. Uh, how about Julius Caesar? Oh, can you hear me just calling... Here, Julius. Come on, Julius. That's as bad as calling him Herbie. Okay, you think of one. Well? Well, I suppose that ought to tie in with the first time I saw him. Yeah. Yeah, how did it happen? I just found him. He was wild and alone. How about lonesome? Or... or outlaw? No. Makes me think he could be wearing a black hat and six guns. <laughs> no, he just kind of drifted in from nowhere. And... Drifty. Drifty. Ghosty? No. Smoke. Smoke! Oh, that's it! Smoke! Smoke. It's there and... Then it goes away. Oh, please, Chris, it's a beautiful name. Smoke. Smoke. You've got a name. Smoke. silk and fat his little belly was just like a balloon <laughs> well i kept custer at the store with me and believe you me he was more company than a dozen neighbors <laughs> mr stone this is my son chris well howdy chris mr stone saw the ad after all this time well my sister sent it to me in idaho that's my territory i I had a store uh, right near Portland. My wife died a few months ago, and I sold out. And now I'm one of those traveling salesmen that you hear all the jokes about. Mr. Stone said that his dog, Custer, just disappeared from his house one day while he was on the road. Yeah, I'd give anything to get Custer back. Mr. Stone, we've... Well, uh, could you describe the dog to us, Mr. Stone? I mean... Well, he... Black, got a fawn throat, pedigree, black muzzle. Just a wonderful looking dog. Well, there must be quite a few shepherds that'd fit that description. 
Well, I guess you're right, Chris. I guess you're right. Well, Chris, maybe you could ask Mr. Stone some questions for description. Did your Custer do anything uh, special after he eats? Special? Hmm. No. Oh, wait a minute. He just started doing this all by himself. I never did, never did teach it to him, but it, well, it got to be a habit, I guess. But when he got through licking his plate, why, he'd just sit right down in front of me and lift his paw for me to shake. <laughs> uh, does this dog do that? Mr. Stone. <laughs> Come here. Oh, your friend there finds you sent and take off, so I followed him. He don't pay much attention to an old man who can hustle through the woods face as he can. He's got advantage on old Leroy. Two extra legs. I don't take that too unkind. Thirty years ago, I could outrun him. Well, what happened? With Mr. Stone, I mean. Yeah, he had so many sample cases in his car, there wasn't room for no smoke. To his credit, though, he did say it'd be mighty unkind for him to take the dog without no chance for you to say goodbye to him. But he is coming back, though, huh? Yeah. In the morning, Chris. Uh, your ma saved your dinner for you. What time in the morning, Leroy? I don't recollect hearing him say why. Maybe I better not say. That way you won't have to explain anything. But if I was his father, it might be a little easier. How? Well, I might know the right thing to say to him. It isn't any easier for me. But I'm telling you, it's different, Fran. But it shouldn't be. You are his father now. No, I'm not. Honey, I'd love to be, but I'm just a substitute. And that's not enough, Fran. For Chris, that's not enough. I kept your supper warm. Thanks, but I'm not very hungry. I think I'll go right to bed. Chris. I'm sorry. I really am. About the way this has all worked out. Chris, it isn't the end of everything. I mean, it's not like Smoke's going to die or something. He's going to live with people who 
We'll take care of him and love him the way that you do. Son, he'll have a good home. Well, you didn't want a dog around here in the first place. Chris. Can I go now? Honey, we know this isn't easy for you. It isn't easy for us either, really. We've been talking about it just now, your father and I. And we thought maybe that you'd like to get another dog. To take Smoke's place. To take Smoke's place? <sighs> you think I'm some baby? All you gotta do is buy me a new rattle or something and I'll shut up? Take his place? You think one dog's as good as another, just like you think one husband's as good as another. Terrible day for you, Chris. Let's talk about it some other time. I'm sorry, Mom. Well, I'm going to go upstairs. Get some sleep. I think maybe you better do the same thing. out someplace where no one can find you for how long quiet Suze you wake everybody up why'd you come tell me I just wanted to Suze you're my kid's sister I don't know where we'll be going, for how long. But I wanted you to know that Smoke and me will be together. I won't tell anyone, Chris. Promise? Hope to die. Let that go. Good luck. Be nice to Mom. Don't ever say mean things to her. Chris, you're not coming back. Ever, are you? Cut it out, Suze. You're not. Come on, Suze. Stop imagining things and get back to sleep, huh?
you want, Suze. And kiss me goodbye. Just stare at me. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Well, say it. Tell me there's a dozen other things I ought to be doing except this. Are you going to say anything? Chris? time when a fellow's got to do what he figures is right, even if it ain't. You really think I'm not doing the right thing? You're the only one can say. What would you do? Well, I ain't you, Chris. You know, Leroy, I'm not doing this just because of smoke. Yeah, I figured that. I mean, I was thinking about taking him away before Mr. Stone comes tomorrow. But something happened. Now I have to go. I'm no man, Chris. I ain't no kin to you. You don't have to explain to me what you do. You're the only one I can explain it to, Leroy. That the way you see it? Understand? It's important to me. Yeah, I reckon I do. Understand something else. But maybe you don't want to hear it. Want to hear anything you got to say, Leroy? Well, a time like this, uh, any fool, young or old, can run away. It takes a man to come back.
can't come back, Leroy. Where's Leroy? He's feeding the chickens. He'll be in a minute. Cal, I've been thinking we're going to have to do something about Chris. There isn't any excuse for what he said to us last night. I'm going to have to confront him with it. I never thought I'd see the day. I'd be nervous about my own son coming down to breakfast. He's not coming down, Fran. He's gone. He's gone? Left in the middle of the night. Well, you have to call the police. That's not who his quarrel is with, is it, Fran? Well, no, his quarrel's with us, but... No, his quarrel's with me. With himself. Fran, it's been brewing since the day we got married. No police gonna solve that. How did you know that he was gone? I heard him. You heard him? And you didn't do anything to stop him? No, I didn't think I should. The sausage is burning, friend. It won't be so bad cold, Smoke. Here. Catch. <laughs> Good boy. Never. He won't ever. 
unless, unless you let him keep smoke. Don't you cry, honey. Don't you cry, Susie. say, boy, we get a little something to eat, and then and as soon as it gets dark, we get a good night's sleep in that barn down there. Cold food's one thing, but cold ground to sleep on, that's something else. Susie. She says she's not hungry. Well, I think I'll talk to her. We have to talk first, Cal. Supper's not ready anyway. Listen, Fran. I'm, uh, I'm gonna call the sheriff. I thought we went through that this morning. Well, you talked me out of it this morning with some notion about this being some test of maturity for Chris. I only half understood it this morning. I don't understand it at all now. Man, he's only been gone for half a day. Well, that's long enough. He's only 14 years old. He's a little boy. He's not a man. <laughs> that's the point, isn't it? No, it isn't. I don't understand you. This isn't some kind of a game he's playing or some contest by some medieval knight jousting to prove that he's reached his manhood. He's gone, and I, I want the sheriff to go and find him and bring him back here, it's safe. I'm asking you, friend, to let it go. Why? To give the kid a chance to come back on his own, that's why. Sure, you can call the sheriff. You, he'll drag him back here with his tail between us. I'm telling you, the kid won't have a, an ounce of pride left. He's not a baby, friend. He's, he's trying awful hard to become a young man. By running away? No, by coming back. All right. Now, what if he falls off a mountain or he gets lost or any one of a million terrible things that can happen to him? Is his pride worth that, too, or his manhood? And what about all the rest of us? You know, you are just fine. You come in here and you wash up and you eat a hearty meal and you're okay. But my heart's up in my mouth and every time that door opens and closes, I just think it's gonna jump out. He's coming back, friend. I may not be today, I may not be tomorrow, but he's coming back and it'll be under his own steam. Cal, I have to call the sheriff. Fran, if we force him to come back now, after what he said, believe me, the kid will never be able to look me in the eye again. There'll never be any love or respect between us, and I'm telling you. We'll just be waiting for the day he decides to run away again when he's old enough or clever enough that we'll never find him. That's the gamble I want to take, Fran. And I'm at... I'm begging you just to have enough trust in your son to take it with me. He's your son, Fran. He... I want him to be my son, too.
we're all right, John. John, we're all right. Glad to hear that. This is where you belong. There's something else uh, I want to talk about, but it was important to me to call first and say I want to come home. Well, it was important to me too. Well, I, I guess that's all. That's enough. I'll be home as soon as I can. Chris? We'll be waiting for you. see you face to face and tell you I didn't no I did mean what I said that's why it was so terrible but I didn't understand that then well I kind of figured that's the way it was Chris but I do understand now and I had to tell you and, and apologize. Well, I'm not going to tell you to forget it, because I don't, I don't think you ever will. I mean, I just want you to know I'm real, real proud to have you back. Mother's pretty anxious to see you, too. So Susie and Leroy. Hey, Smoke. I know I'm gonna have to give Smoke back to Mr. Stone. I'd like to call him. Yeah, I think you should. Was he real sore? <laughs> well, he, uh... Your sister cried and cried so, and I explained to him that a big dog like that just wasn't gonna be too happy or cooped up traveling all the time in the car, so... She's pretty persuasive, your sister. Although, to tell you the truth, I think Mr. Stone's already come to that conclusion on his way over here. <laughs> and I can keep smoke? It's okay with me. Thanks. Chris? We're gonna get back. Imagine you got a lot to tell, ain't you? Start. How about you? 